Hey, I've got an idea. Let's get out in the great outdoors. Let's learn about rare, threatened, and endangered species. What can we do to help them from going extinct? Extinct. Hello, third grade friends. So we've learned a lot about organisms and their survival. We've learned about habitats, the place where an organism finds what it needs to survive, food, water, shelter, space to move around. We've learned about ecosystems, a place where living and non-living things interact and are connected. And we've learned about ecosystems. When ecosystems change, whether it's because of humans or another change, organisms have one of three options. Number one, maybe an organism could adapt, adapt and reproduce. I think Canada geese have adapted really well to humans being here. These Canada geese are flying over to agricultural fields where they'll feed on grain that was left over when they cleared the soybeans out of the field. So some animals can adapt and reproduce when ecosystems change. The Canada goose is one of those organisms that has adapted and changed very well. Maybe an organism like this dragonfly, if its environment changes and it can't find the food it needs, maybe because pesticides killed the insects it feeds on, maybe it would adapt and find a different insect to feed on. So some animals, some organisms, plants and animals, can adapt and reproduce to the changes in the environment. Let's find out if there's another way an organism could survive. Hey friends, trout like brown trout and rainbow trout, they need cold, clear water. If the water warms up too much, they can either move to an area where the water's colder, maybe by where a spring is coming in, or they can adapt and they can reproduce. That takes a lot of time. If water warms up quickly, like behind the dam in a river, then a fish either moves or it dies. It can't survive. So think about it. Rapid changes to an ecosystem mean that survival is very difficult because it takes time to adapt and change. Friends, another thing that an organism may be able to do is move to a new location. If there's good habitat left in a different place and an animal's large enough or can fly and can get there, maybe an animal could move and find new resources where it could find what it needs to survive, like food, water, and shelter. So some organisms can move. That's kind of hard to do if you're a plant and you're rooted in the ground, unless an animal helps move your seeds around. But moving is one of the things an organism can sometimes do if it's faced with a decline in habitat. Friends, if the ecosystem changes dramatically, and an organism cannot find food, water, shelter, what it needs to survive, if it cannot adapt or move, then it's probably going to die. Like the dinosaurs did, like the woolly mammoths, like the saber-toothed tigers did. Things changed in their environment and they died. If all of the members of a species dies, then we say it becomes extinct. Friends, there are many factors that have went into the extinction of species in the last few hundred years. But we know that the climate has changed. We know that habitat destruction is one of the things that hurts so many threatened and endangered species. Hey, let's take a look at ways that humans are helping species. And I'll even tell you some ways that you can help rare, threatened, and endangered species, because I know y'all want to help. Y'all love those endangered animals, don't you? Let's see what we can do to help endangered and threatened species. So we've learned about fossils, and we've learned that fossils provide evidence of what ancient creatures and the ancient environments they lived in were like. We've learned a lot from fossils. We've learned that where we live in Michigan was covered by a warm ocean at one time. And then after that, it was covered by ice. We've learned that from fossils. So fossils teach us about what conditions used to be like right here where we live. That's pretty cool. Now, learning from fossils, maybe we can do some things to help wildlife that's 
rare, threatened, and endangered. Let's see what we can do. There's things that even you can do, friends. Let's find out. Psst. Hey, friends, it's me, Mr. Peterson. How you doing? Hey, one thing you can do to help rare, endangered, and threatened species is learn more about them. Knowledge is powerful. You can learn about them and teach others. Learn about the plants and animals in your area that are endangered. Like the snake. Whoa, there's a snake right there. Whoa, don't handle snakes. But look at this tortoise and the snake. Learn about the spotted turtle and the wood turtle. Learn about the Massasauga rattlesnake that lives here in Michigan. Don't handle them, but learn about them. Look at that. Awesome. Oh, they're not real. Sorry. <laughs> they're not real. Reduce, reuse, recycle. That's one way that you can help wildlife by protecting habitat. If we use fewer resources, we save more wildlife habitat. Reduce, reuse, recycle. You know about this. Oh, hi. Did you know composting your food scraps can help save wildlife? That's right, composting food scraps helps to save space in landfills so our landfills don't get so huge. So if you compost your food waste and do it correctly, cover it up with a little soil, put leaves or grass on top so it decomposes, then I can use this compost later on next spring when I plant my garden organically. Learn gardening and composting. Gardening and composting helps you to get your own food from our good old earth, and it helps to save space in landfills, and you don't have to buy as much. Yes. You could put out shelters for some rare animals. Check this so out. The Eastern bluebird is a beautiful bird that became quite rare in the 60s and 70s, partly because of DDT. And people have put up boxes so the bluebirds could nest in them. This is a bluebird box. And they like these openings in old brushy fields or on the edge of a forest to nest. So this is a, a bluebird box that my friend Ranger Steve has put up and many broods of bluebirds have used it. Good job. Friends, another way that you can help endangered and rare wildlife is by planting native species. If you have a flower garden or part of your yard where you plant plants, make sure the flowers, trees, and shrubs that you plant are native. Native plants attract native wildlife species. And native flowers give nectar to butterflies and bees that may be rare or endangered. So plant native plants whenever you can.